In this video, we're going to talk about what a markup language is. First, let's talk about a definition. If you were to Google markup language, you'd probably find something like this. In computer text processing, a markup language is a system for annotating a document in a way that is syntactically distinguishable from the text, meaning when the document is processed for display, the markup language is not shown and is only used to format the text. What on earth does that mean? Let's take a look at an example. So here we have some HTML code on the left and a web page on the right. You might recognize this web page as the page for our class. So this is what's going on under the hood of that page. Now, as you can see, there is some language on the page that turns up in the code and also turns up when it's rendered in the browser. And we can identify that throughout this little bit of coded page. And it's, it's in black, that makes it easy to find. And it turns up here. Look, look for example, at the um, banner heading here, module one, what is a markup language? That's exactly here on the page. Now, you might notice that there's also some other information here that does not show up on the browser exactly as it's stated in the code page, right? These H1 tags, and that's the technical name for them, tags. Uh, these section tags, H2 tags, um, the ULs, LIs, even the Ps, none of that appears over here. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about markup. If we were to just, you know, take out only the things that are the actual content of the page, it would look kind of like this. But we're putting around that content these tags that communicate to the browser how to render those tags um, in the live HTML, in the live web page. These tags over here give the browser information about how to display the text that we've typed in. Um, some of them are, are, are paragraphs, some of them are headings, and these little tags tell the browser exactly what they are and how to deal with them. So is HTML the only kind of tech, uh, markup language? No. So here's another example. TEI is called is the Text Encoding Initiative. This is actually a really early uh, digital humanities markup language that was created to help render digitally literary and historical texts in their exact format and also with some semantic tagging, and I'll talk about that in a second, to help scholars analyze meaning of texts. So for example, let's say you wanted to render online this poem of Lewis Carroll, The Mouse's Tale. Now notice this is um, a poem that has a very distinctive form and obviously it's meaningful. It's in the shape of a mouse tail. So if you were really trying to faithfully represent this poem, just showing the words wouldn't be enough. And that's what you, know, you can normally do in a text document. But if you wanted to really show this, how would you do it? in code. Now, one thing you could do, obviously, you could take a picture of this like this is here. This is just a little PDF file that shows the poem. But what's the problem with that? You wouldn't be able to actually look at the meaning and you wouldn't be able to do any sort of automatic analysis of, for example, even how many lines there are on the poem. You wouldn't even be able to count um, because it's just one image. So this is where something like TEI comes in. So here is the rendered code version and you can see there are these tags in this case l and l means exactly what you'd think line um, and then it gives some different information right so you can see here through the font sizes and the indenting um, values it's creating the staggered effect now this this is the poem rendered in code and it's it's really similar to the image of the poem right this is the poem rendered in code so this would be searchable you could find individual words in the poem you can obviously count the number of lines in the poem so this is an analyzable digital version of that poem that is quite faithful to this original um, text-based version of the poem so that's an example uh, with TEI and that shows you it's got a little bit of a different purpose to it than just your general HTML and CSS. But you can see how that that is also a language that is markup that is has this content but then puts tags around it to uh, help communicate information about how that's supposed to be rendered digitally. I'm going to give you one more example with TEI just to show you the idea of semantic 
um, tagging. So in this example, you can see it's charting things like rhyme scheme and then even labeling the different rhymes. So the whole stanza is in this scheme and then it's labeling the individual lines and the rhyme at the end of the lines. Um, and it's using this distinctive tag rhyme that we don't use in HTML, that we do use in TEI. So just imagine if you were a scholar and you had a whole bunch of poems that were coded in with TEI, you could use a computer to go through and look for rhyme schemes. And let's say you could compare among a whole bunch of poets, uh, what's the most common rhyme scheme, or even find different examples from different poets that use the same rhyme scheme. Um, in order to help you analyze that poetry. So this can be a very powerful thing to use this semantic marking to label and tag texts for further analysis. So, so that's, that's what TEI is about, and that's another type of um, markup language. But let's get back to the question at hand here, and that's HTML and CSS. So uh, we're going to use HTML here, and in the further tutorials, you'll hear a lot more about CSS as well. But just keep in mind that what we're talking about when we're talking about a markup language is content on the page and then surrounding it with tags that help us to understand, you know, in this case, the browser to understand how to render that content um, in the way that you'd like, and you indicate that by using your tags.